Travel back in time with a trip inside the Iowa's News Now vault. People in Worthington say they've never seen anything like it and never want to again. The storm destroyed businesses and cars. At least seven homes here were demolished. Most say there was little warning. It was the real round all the way from the top to the bottom was like a big barrel instead of the, the narrow on the bottom. It was just big and you can just see things up in the sky just flying around. It's just it's incredible. At least 40 people are homeless tonight. They, along with others in shock, are finding comfort at the Red Cross Relief Center at Worthington's Town Hall. We all went down in the basin. Marie was leading the rosary and I was answering. And when we got down below the steps, we heard the roar, just like a train. And I said, Marie, there it goes. When we got up, my every, the things were all scattered all over. Houses were down. Have you ever seen anything like that? Oh, no, I never did, and I never want to see it again. That is a blessing as far as I know. No one has been hurt. Things have been destroyed, but things can be brought back. But people are fine. Well, That's Sandy. Sue Rowling and her family feel very lucky that they survived a direct hit from a tornado that devastated their farmhouse. Mrs. Rowling says she had just heard a tornado warning on the television. And she looked out the window and saw a twister bearing down on her home. I'm just lucky my kids are okay. That's all. Mrs. Rowling and her two children escaped unharmed, but several pet dogs were trapped under debris, and they howled as the Rowlings attempted to rescue them. The tornado that hit the Rowlings farm apparently touched down first near Prairieburg at about 5 p.m., and from there the twister traveled northeast toward Worthington. At least 13 different farms were damaged by the twister, including the Dan Stedmuller farm near Prairieburg. And we were just in the basement praying that it would miss us. But as you can see, we took a real direct hit. Now the long process of cleaning up begins for the families that were hit by the tornado. Here at the Stadmuller residence in northwest Jones County, friends and neighbors are pitching in and helping the family that was devastated by the storm. I feel sorry for anybody that has to go through a mess like this. The families who lived through the tornado know it will take a very long time to recover from the shock and the devastation. They're very glad that they have friends that will help them start over. Mike Tank, Channel 2 News, Jones County. For the first time in her life, Verna Lusick found herself homeless. A pine tree gave Verna and her grandchildren shelter, while family and friends surveyed what was left of her home. I couldn't believe it what happened. I just sat there and bawled for a half hour. I don't have anything left at all except the clothes that I had on doing chores out to the farm is all we had left. In all, 11 homes were destroyed here. Mary Boyle lost hers along with her car and her cat. But Mary's plants remain standing on the fireplace mantle. Across the street, Clem and Ruth Cass too say their home is a loss. They say the tornado hit with little warning. They hit the basement. It lasted. It seemed like an eternity for probably only about 30 seconds to a minute was all it lasted. We heard the roar and we heard all the glass breaking in the house. And then the next thing you know, the roar got a little louder and then pretty soon there was insulation and sawdust coming down on top of us. And then the next thing you know, everything was quiet and it was all over. 30 cars and trucks were demolished in Worthington. This car fell into the basement, just missing a family who sought shelter there. Mary Rubner's home wasn't destroyed, but it isn't the same after last night. It's twisted. It's completely twisted. None of the doors will shut. Hundreds of people helped in the cleanup effort. This area farmer ended up directing traffic. Last night, this priest began consoling victims. Though devastating, he says there is a bright side to all of this. Things have been destroyed, but things can be brought back. But people are fine. Sandy Reesgraf, Channel 2 News, Worthington. And for some reason or another, we just decided to film everything. Here's where you see the tornado that actually hit our town of Hopkinton. That's a tornado? That's it. That's what you're looking for. Oh, my God. Well, we heard the sound. It sounded just like a freight train and the sound of the wind and all that. And the hail, just 
It started out pea size, and before we knew it, it looked like we were seeing golf ball. And then before we knew it, we had some that you swear that was as big as a tennis ball. Now here we are at the Mettler farm. Siding was ripped from the home. The windows were blown out. Uh, shingles were pulled right off in the roof. I feel sorry for these people. Um, they've lost everything. I'm really grateful we all come out alive without hardly a scratch on us. And everything else was destroyed in a matter of seconds. Now I'm out at the Lido farm residence. And here's one of the family members now they're out trying to find some of their personal belongings. If the tail would have swung a half a second one way or the other, you know, it could have took the whole farm and it didn't. It just took the porch and the windows out of the house the bathroom. and nobody was hurt. Now here I'm fielding back from the Leadham farm storm back to the Doug Mettler farm. So you can see the distance that the storm traveled and in the path. It's just amazing that a storm can do that much damage. All totally gone on the other side of the street away. The house just kind of exploded the way it looks. That's, that's what happened to all these homes. They all just kind of exploded. High winds kept Governor Branstad from flying to Worthington for two days. Yet when he arrived this morning, people here were more than anxious to talk to him. I've been trying to get here for two days. This way. Branstad praised Red Cross workers, volunteer firefighters, and the civil defense. He says without the half hour warning, things could have been much worse. People got in their basements and and fortunately, uh, nobody was uh, killed or seriously injured. A tremendous amount of property damage, uh, but you can't replace uh, human life. And, and I, you, we just got to feel good that we didn't have any deaths. Branstad says he's sending in the National Guard to clean up a stream that runs through town. Congressman Tom Talkey, too, offered help. Oh, this is the worst I've ever seen in uh, Dubuque County. I've lived here all my life. Uh, we don't have any trees left. That's the worst yeah. part. 83-year-old right Lillian right Sherlock was comforted by the governor's visit. Lillian's home was moved off of its foundation by the storm. She lost her garage. Were you home when the tornado hit? Mm -hmm. I was sitting on the front porch in the rocking chair. <laughs> and in her rocking chair, Lillian sat watching the storm snatch up home after home. Is this your place? Before the governor left this morning, he gave people here some good news. We're going to, I want to declare a disaster area. So if, if there's any problems developed, just don't hesitate to call me. Sure Have will. a good job. Okay. Thanks a lot. Man. You bet. I bet you. Thank Thanks. you. Sandy Reescraft, Channel 2 News, Worthington. As the noon bell tolled in Worthington, cleanup crews prepared to take a break. Things are looking better here, but today it was workers against the wind. It's making it a little difficult. I don't know whether it was worse uh, fighting the rain yesterday or the wind today, but the wind is terrible. It really is. It's giving us some fits. It isn't helping anything, no. It just makes it more miserable working, I guess. Gusts of wind were so strong this morning that the Worthington Feed Center began to sway. So crews decided to pull it down before it fell on its own. Lines formed at the Red Cross shelter for a warm meal today. Bob Lucky and his wife came. Bob was actually locked outside when the tornado began tearing away at his home. I just laid down on the back steps, you know, to keep them blown away. Hang on for dear life. What was going through your mind? Just praying to God I didn't blow away. While some businesses were being torn down, other people tried to build theirs back up. Finishing a new roof at Steph's quick shop in the wind was difficult. No way would I have went up myself because it blew off it. But they went up and did it this morning. I'll give the guys credit. Slowly but surely, people are getting their businesses and lives back in order here. But what happened late Tuesday afternoon is not forgotten and probably never will be. It'll always be in the back of your mind. You see it and you don't see it. You know, whatever. That's the way I feel about it. I don't know. It's scary. Sandy Reescraft, Channel 2 News, Worthington. What if your farm, the source of your livelihood, was mangled by a tornado? How would you cope? How would you live? No one got hurt, and, uh, and uh, we can replace a lot of this stuff. It's hard to come to grips with the devastation caused by a late afternoon of tornado destruction. But the people in the Worthington, Prairieburg, and Hopkinton areas can't wonder and worry too much. They must react, recover, and rebuild. And they and their friends are doing just that. 
Tornado missed my farm by about 200 yards, so I figure I'd come in and help my friends out. Why us? But I guess we're alive, and that's all that really counts. This just kind of shows us human beings what whoops we really are. But I am still here yet, and that's the main thing. The rest cannot be replaced.